The Cincinnati Bearcats dominated from start to finish by the Houston Cougars Sunday night, 80-58. to A recap of the game, my takeaways, and my takeaway from this past weekend's Senior Bowl as relates to the Cincinnati Bearcats coming up on Locked On Bearcats. You are Locked On Bearcats daily podcast on the Cincinnati Bearcats, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much for making Locked On Bearcats your first listen every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online. As you can as you covered, excuse me, this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet online where the game starts. Alex Frank here with you as we are going to recap the Bearcats 80 to 58 loss to Houston Sunday night on the hardwood in men's basketball. We'll also get to my takeaways from this game. Um, I'm not upset. I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed that um that Cincinnati got, let's just say it dominated. Um Houston is really good. I mean, they are they are the absolute class of this league right now, and I don't see any team realistically having a shot, maybe SMU, of them of Houston being over of anybody overtaking Houston to win this conference. So we'll get to that. And then the senior bowl happened this weekend. Um a big thing, a, a big picture um takeaway for me which we'll get to. But first, a recap of the Houston, of the Cincinnati versus Houston game last night. I mean, let's start with Houston. Um, We knew coming in, and I told you all this on Friday, Houston's very good. You look at the numbers, and you look at the, um, just the schedule, the fact that they only had Two losses coming in, one by one point, one by two points. So that told you everything you needed to know right there and then. But we look since, or we look at this game, we look at this game Sunday night. Sorry about the pauses there. I was making sure my volume is good, which we're good. Uh, Anyway, for Houston. We know we knew they could score. They were averaging around 76 points per game. They scored 80. Fabian White Jr. with 22 points. Uh Jamal Shedd with 17 points. And then um Tazi Moore with 13. So Houston had their had three scores. Kyler Edwards, by the way, only had eight points. And Marcus Sasser, their leading scorer, is still on the season. Didn't even play. Josh Carlton only Josh Carlton only had eight points, but they also got Robert Cheney with ten points off the bench. Uh, rebounding battle, Houston pulled down thirty eight. The Bearcats only had twenty six, but that's because a lot of shots Houston threw at the rim went in. They were thirty two of sixty from the field. That's fifty eight. That's fifty three rather fifty three point three percent. They were 8 of 21 from downtown. They were 8 of 11 from the free throw line. If there's one thing Cincinnati did do well in this game, it's that they did not foul. But Houston also made a lot of of shots. Sorry about that advertisement there. Um, It's a car company that, well, maybe I'll end up buying a car from there one day. Anyway, Cincinnati, uh, they were led by David DeJulius, who played really well was the reason why Cincinnati was able to turn a 21-point deficit in the first half early and make it a game. This was an 11-point game at the half. This was a 42-31 to game, and then Jeremiah Davenport hits a three to start the second half on the Bearcats' first possession to cut it to 42-34. And at that point, I was like, okay, this is you know a game here. Maybe Cincinnati is going to hang around and maybe close strong to win the game, but that's ultimately not what happened because Houston gradually built the lead up into the tw- up into the 20s 
and they closed the game out. They outscored the Bearcats 38-27 to in the second half. So they so they outscored the Bearcats by 11 in each half to win the game 80-58. to The Julius had 25 points. He was a perfect 12-12 of from the free throw line. If the Bearcats, again, one thing they did well, they didn't foul Houston, and they got to the free throw line themselves. The Julius finished with 25 points, 6 of 14 from the floor. Uh, uh, the next closest score, this is the problem. This is the problem for Cincinnati. And what separates them from Houston is they'll get a great performance from one player on a given night. Houston will get three or four good performances. The next closest score to David DeJulius was Jeremiah Davenport with nine points. But he was a dismal 3 of 12 from the field. 3 of 12. The leading rebounder for Cincinnati, Odie Oguama. He came off the bench. Five rebounds, four points. Did well in his 16 minutes of play off the bench. Houston's leading rebounder was Fabian White Jr. He had nine. Offensive rebound totals, close, eight to seven in favor of Houston. But the difference was Houston made shots. They made they had 60 field goal attempts. They made 32. The Bearcats had 53 attempts. That's seven fewer. They only made 18. Field goal percentage was 19.3% difference in favor of Houston. Other individual numbers for the Bearcats. Abdullah Du. Remember how I said he needs to be doing more in the front court if he's starting? He only played 15 minutes. Had two points. Both of them came from the free throw line. Did not attempt a single shot. Four rebounds. Micah Adams Woods had six points. Three rebounds. He was three of seven from the floor. John Newman only had one point. It came from the free throw line. Um, Victor Lockin had seven points. Three of four from the floor. I, th- I-, I liked what I saw from him. Odio Guama, as I mentioned earlier, had four. Mike Saunders Jr. Uh, three points. Four assists. Bearcats had eight assists, but 10 turnovers. Houston, on the other hand, had 15 assists to 10 turnovers. That's 1.5 to 1 in assist to turnover ratio. So Cincinnati, for as much as they kept it close early, Houston just, they were just so efficient, so just good, athletic, and just a much better team than Cincinnati right now. And I got some takeaways from this game. I'll also tell you one thing that Wes Miller said on the 700 WLW postgame show that stood out to me. We'll get to all of that next after we recap some numbers for you from both sides. I didn't get to every single player on Houston. Um, Fabian White Jr., I mentioned 22 points, 9 rebounds, 8 of 13 from the floor, 4 of 5 from 3. Uh, Kyler Edwards, 8 points. Three of nine from the floor, two of seven from three. He had five rebounds, uh, six assists from Jamal Shedd. He also had three steals, did have four turnovers, and picked up three fouls. Um, Josh Carlton had 8.6 rebounds, three of five from the floor, and 23 minutes of play. Houston played 11 total players in this game. Cincinnati played 11 as well. Mike Saunders Jr., by the way, played 24 minutes off the bench. So we'll come back, give you my takeaways from this game now that we've recapped the game for you. All the key numbers, the Bearcats falling 80-58 to 58 to the number six ranked team in the country, Houston. I, I can't believe I haven't, I haven't mentioned that, but I did mention it a lot on Friday. Bearcats fall to 15-7 and seven on, the, on the season overall, 5-4 and four in the American Athletic Conference. The Cougars improved to, two, <laughs> I mean, they are now 20-2. Nine and O in the American Athletic Conference. Nine and O. Cincinnati is back at it next Wednesday at USF, a crucial game. And then they are on the road. That's a seven o'clock tip Wednesday night. And then Saturday night is an 8 30 p.m. tip. I know another late game at Tulsa. If you need a night before the Super Bowl tune up, be sure to check out the Bearcats in Tulsa. My takeaways are next. When we, uh, or after this 
live read and advertisement because first I want to tell you about betonline.net. BetOnline has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before as football continues. It's March through the playoffs right to the big game in six days. BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all of your sports, scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just football because BetOnline has up-to-the-minute info on pro and college hoops, NHL, boxing, UFC, along with live Real-time updates of current games. So don't wait to take advantage of all the new amazing offers available for the 2022 season. Bet online, where the game starts. It's Super Week brought to you by Get Upside, and there's no better place to get coverage of the big game than locked than the Locked On NFL podcast. Locked On Bengals and Locked On Rams are in LA all week covering the big game. Of course, our good friends. Jake Lisko and James Rapine from Lockdown Bengals. They're in Los Angeles for the soup for Super Bowl 56. The Bengals taking on the LA Rams Sunday night, 6:30 p.m. on NBC. Of course, you can also hear the game live locally on ESPN 1530, 1027 WEBN and 700 WLW and all across what is known as the First Star Logistics Bengals Radio Network. Dan Hoard and Dave Lapham. Wayne Box Miller with the call starting at 6.30 from SoFi Stadium in Inglewood, California. It's hard to believe we are six days away, six days away from Super Bowl 56. You know what's great about this is um, the Super Bowl Sunday, and it's exactly one month removed, or not one month removed, it's one month away from Selection Sunday, so... Once football season ends and you wonder what the heck you're going to do on Sundays, well, college basketball is <laughs> nearing the, the best time of the year. And in my opinion, um, the best time of year in the sports world, and that's March Madness. So, or the month of March, so many high-level games, so much intensity for one whole month. Um, anyway, if the Bearcats are going to play in the month of March, they are going to have to turn some things around. I like this Bearcats team. I really do. But Wes Miller said something on the postgame show on 700 WLW that really stood out to me. Um, he said that Houston played. He said that Houston played with a different effort level last night. And I believe that. And watching the game and seeing how easy Houston made it. Seeing how efficient they ran their offense as Terry Nelson, the Bearcats color analyst on radio, pointed out. Seeing how every shot they threw at the rim regardless of the degree of difficulty, the arm angle, it somehow went in. That's a team that is finessed. They are, I don't want to say fully developed. There's still a lot of season left to play. And Houston is going to face some really good teams in the NCAA tournament the further they go, which I do believe they will go far, just as they did last year when they went to the Final Four. The effort level that Houston plays with, the intensity that they play with on every single possession is it, it is it is a very difficult to play against. You have to play 40 total minutes to beat Houston. And like I mentioned on Friday's show last week, the games the Bearcats have won against Houston over the years, it's not like they've been walks in the park. I mean, they won two games in, in 2018 when they were really good since Cincinnati, when they were what Houston is now, a top 10 team. The first time they beat him, they had to come back from an 18-point deficit in the first half. That was at home. The second time, it was a 56-55 grinded-out game in the AAC Championship game of the conference tournament. 2019, they win by 12, but it's not like Houston didn't put up their put up a fight. And then in 2020, the Bearcats had to come back from down 15 with 13 minutes to go at home. This is not an easy team to play against. I didn't think the Bearcats got, you know, run out of the gym last night. I thought they held their own in the first half. When it was 33-12, when it was 33-12, I was like, oh, this, is, this, this game's over. But the next thing you know, the Bearcats outscored the Cougars by 10 to get, to get the game within manageable reach. It was then 42-31. And you're thinking, okay, they're down 11. 
they're not getting embarrassed. You don't feel like they're going to get blown out in this game like you did two years, like you did last year when you watched the Bearcats go up against Houston. Like there is a, this is a team that like, like I've said all season, they're competitive. They'll play hard, but they don't have that true alpha. They don't have that true alpha. If David DeJoyce's 25 points is not enough to keep this game within 10 points, let that tell you something. And that's no knock on David DeJoyce. But this team simply just isn't good enough to compete with Houston. The teams that beat Houston over the years, even the 2020 team, which if they had played Houston again, I think they I don't think they would have won. But that team at least had Jaron Cumberland and Trey Scott. Senior leaders who had played in so many of those games before they knew what to expect. And there was still that that alpha mentality within the program. There just isn't that right now. There's an effort. I'm not saying the Bearcats are are you know not giving full effort. But considering that they lost a temple and they barely escaped ECU, this result was expected. I said 82-63, it was 80 to 58. This is why I'm not mad or upset. I'm just disappointed that it turned out the way it did. If if I if I'm sitting here right now recording this and the Bearcats lost hmm, 75-65, you can say, okay, you you can build off of this. And you can build off of this too. Wes Miller talked about it. He and Terry Nelson talked about this on the postgame show last night. But they have to do it the right way. They got two road games next week. And I'm not saying they're going to be easy. USF is going to come. They're going to come. They're going to be scrappy. They're playing at home. And they've given the Bearcats some problems over the years. Tulsa... Is it is a team the Bearcats have played numerous close games with, even though they just beat them by 21 a few weeks ago. This is a road game. Teams don't quit at home. Unless you're the Pittsburgh Steelers in week three against the Bengals this year, as Tyler Boyd said. But that's a story for another day. Anyway, so my takeaways from this game. Um number one is <laughs> I mean, Houston's really good. I mean, they they are final four good. They might be national championship good. Now, there is a difference between Final Four good and national championship good because it's almost like the the, the postseason resets once you get to the Final Four. There is a certain intensity and execution that you have to have, level of execution you have to have with the intensity to win in the Final Four. It's It's one thing to get there. It's another thing to win there. I've noticed that over the years watching the NCAA tournament. So Houston's really good. And like I said, they play like they're really good. They make all these athletic shots. Everything they throw at the rim just it goes in. They make the game look easy. I'm not saying that this is the Houston this is the Houston teams from the mid 80s or the early to mid 80s. Five slam and gem. I wasn't alive for them, but I've I've heard about them. I've seen the 30 for 30. Survive in advance. Or actually, no, that that would be that would be on uh Five, uh, that'd be the thirty for thirty on five slam and jamma. But I, I've seen how I've seen highlights. So Houston's really good. That's my first takeaway. Number two is I thought the Bearcats did play hard. You know, in the second half, Houston it felt like when it felt like it, the game could have gotten way out of hand, like it did two years, two times last year. Bearcats battled back to the low teens. In the deficits. So I liked that. Um, but as Wes Miller said, there's a certain effort level you have to have to play Houston. You can't just, it can't just be patchwork. You got to have an identity. You got to, I don't know what I'm seeing there. Um, you got to have an identity. You got to execute at a high level. You can't take any possessions off against Houston. One thing that stood out to me in the second half at the beginning, when the Bearcats pulled to within eight, they started falling in love with the three, and they missed so many three-point shots. If they had not, if they had worked the ball into the paint, which is not their strength, this is a guard-oriented team. They don't have a true big man. You heard my, you heard the stats on Abdul Adu. He didn't attempt a single shot. I mean, how does your big man not attempt a single shot, and he starts? So they got to they gotta find a way to develop big men, work the ball in the paint. 
Number three. Um, I thought about this earlier yesterday leading up to the game. For as great as it is that Cincinnati is joining the Big 12, Houston's coming, Houston's coming too. So this matchup is going to continue. It's not going to get any easier. And I've talked about how that's going to impact recruiting at Cincinnati. The same too for Houston. By the way, you can sell to Houston or you can sell to recruits at Houston. Hey, Final Four 2021, recency bias, they can commit. Based on that, Cincinnati, again, hasn't made a Final Four since 1992. They've only made one Sweet 16 since 2001. For as successful of a program as Cincinnati is, they now have a kryptonite in Houston. And for so many years, Cincinnati was the kryptonite for many teams in their conference. Now, Cincinnati's kryptonite is Houston. And it's not... Houston's going to get their recruits... They're going to get everything Cincinnati's going to get in the Big 12. And until Cincinnati can play at the effort level that Houston's playing at, those results might continue once both teams join the Big 12. Number four, um, they didn't get blown out. That's at least. At least they didn't get blown out. Because last year they did it twice. You know, losing by 22, yes, is a blowout, technically. But in the but at least they kept it closer, and you felt like they had a chance. That's how I look at it. So they did get blown out technically, but I felt like they had a chance. But number five, they got a long way to go. I mean, this is now February 7th. Selection Sunday is... In 41 days. As of now, this Bearcat, the Bearcats are not getting their name called. Unless they go on a miraculous run through the rest of conference play. I think we're at a point now where Cincinnati is going to have to win the AAC championship to get to conference play. Or to get to the NCAA tournament. I think we're at that point. More on that tomorrow and this week. But they got a long way to go. If they want to be at the level that Houston's at. They're not where they were when they beat when they were beating Houston consistently just a couple of years ago. They're not. They didn't get blown out. They played hard and they, you know, competed. But they just gotta ramp up the effort level and execute better to beat this Houston team because there is no margin for error when you play this team. The Senior Bowl happened this weekend. We'll get to my reactions and big takeaway next here on Locked On Bearcats. But first, um, this is the time of year that I've pretty much given up on all of my New Year's resolutions. First off, I don't make New Year's resolutions. Finally coming out with that. But not this year because I'm sticking to my resolution to eat right thanks to Bilt Bar. It almost feels... Like, it's not really a resolution because I actually enjoy eating them, and I do. Have you tried the puffs? Because if you haven't, you're missing out on one of Built Bar's best tasting bars. Puffs are the first ever protein infused marshmallow. Mmm, that sounds good. They're fluffy, they're marshmallowy, they're not just a protein bar, they're a treat, and they're covered in 100% real chocolate. Puffs are a fan favorite with some incredible flavors, yummy cinnamon. Cinnamony, churro, coconut, marshmallow, banana, creme, pie. Mmm, so good. These are going to be your new favorite. All Bill Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate. Yes, puffs included. 100% real chocolate. They only contain 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar and net carbs each, and 17 grams of protein. And you got mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond, and new for this month. How about this? White chocolate cookies and cream. Oh, that sounds good. They are all delicious, and new flavors are coming out all the time. If you think a flavor might be good, they'll make it. It will be delicious, and it will be good for you. At Built Bar, they're all about the taste. They make it taste delicious first, then figure out how to make it healthy. Now, why would you not want to try that and make that a New Year's resolution? I know I'm going to, and I don't know how, but they pull it off every time. <laughs> I mean, they get the deliciousness first, then healthy? What other food does that? I don't know. Built Bar does. And you can go to Built.com. Use promo code LOCKED15 and get 15% off your order. 
Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. Once again, thank you for making Lockdown Bearcats your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Alex Frank here with you. So the Senior Bowl happened this weekend. Desmond Ritter was fantastic in the game, leading the national team to a 20-10 victory. He was 4 of 6 for 68 yards and two touchdowns through the air. He also added 14 rushing yards on two attempts. MyJ Sanders had four tackles and um, a tackle and a half for loss and three tackles each went to Kobe Bryant and Darian Beavers. Alec Pierce, Jerome Ford, and Brian Cook did not compete in the game, but they practiced this week um, at the Senior Bowl. So my takeaway is this. Um, I did not watch the Senior Bowl on Saturday, but um, from reading what the, from what the Bearcats had done and hearing Jerome Ford and hearing Desmond Ritter and hearing Kobe Bryant talk, um, what stood out to me is this. You know, in this city, and this is and this is going back to how the city and the perception has changed of Cincinnati sports. In years past, it'd be nice if if, if Cincinnati sent a player or two to a, an event like this. You'd be like, oh yeah, you know, Cincinnati's being represented, but it probably wouldn't amount to much. That player maybe would do would do some notable things, but just felt like they were another player. There are no offense to anybody who has over the years. But now, with the Bearcats being a college football playoff caliber program, this is the standard where we're going to send multiple players to events like this, and we're going to and we're going to have a player stand out in this game. Desmond Ritter threw two touchdown passes. The national team scored two touchdowns in the game, and Ritter was responsible for both touchdown throws. In years past, like you would hope. That a player or two would get drafted. I remember I, I did an article for the news record when I record when I wrote for them at Cincinnati. And I remember one of my assignments was to do a draft preview. And this was in January. And I go through the names who might get drafted. At that time, it was guys like Lyndon Stevens and Corey Cunningham. And you were just hoping to hear Bearcat get drafted within the draft in the seven rounds. Now you're hoping that a player can get drafted in the first round like Desmond Ritter and Sauce Gardner, who I do believe will be drafted for sure in the first round. That's how far this program has come. It's no longer just, you know, oh, yeah, it's nice when a player gets drafted. No. The expectation is, and Desmond Ritter said this earlier this week, that he hopes this university can can continue to be a great place that churns out these athletes. That's what the expectation is. Desmond Ritter and Luke Fickle have created expectations within this program. You know what's interesting? When the Bearcats had the that run from 07 through 2012 when they won, what, five Big East championships? Or no, four Big East championships in 08, 09, 11, and 12, and then shared with um, Houston and Memphis and the AAC in 2014. But there really weren't expectations. Because they didn't sustain the success from 09. They went, they fell off to 4 and 8 the next year. And you think about with the Bengals in 05, they won 11 games, but they didn't get back to the playoffs until four years later. But you now have, like, it was fun to have those teams have success then. But now there are expectations. Luke Fickle and Desmond Ritter have created expectations in Clifton. Joe Burrow has created expectations um, at Paul Brown Stadium within the Bengals. That's what this city's about now. And with Cincinnati, it's no longer just being happy for a player getting invited to the Senior Bowl or a player hoping to get drafted. No, this is okay. There are expectations to churn out these great draft prospects that can go very early in the draft, first round, second round, and then you're going to f- closely follow their careers. I think Gar- I think Sauce Gardner is going to have a great career. I think I think he's going to be a cornerback for at least five years, if not ten. I think Desmond Ritter can change a franchise. I think Desmond Ritter, if he goes to the right place, to the right team, you know what I'd love for Desmond Ritter to do? I'd love for him to go to Tampa Bay. I'd love for him to go to Tampa Bay, inherit a great offensive system. If Byron Leftwich stays as offensive coordinator, whoa, that's good. 
Bruce Arians is a head coach. I know, I know he does some things that you know a lot of fans don't like, but Bruce Arians has a Super Bowl championship. Now you can say that's because of Tom Brady. Bruce Arians also got um, Indianapolis to the playoffs in 2012. Uh, Arizona had some good years under him. They made the playoffs twice. He also won a Super Bowl as the offensive coordinator for the Steelers in 08. If Ritter goes to Tampa Bay with the weapons that he will have surrounding him too on the field, that's a great that's a great landing spot. I think Tampa Bay could be a playoff team with Desmond Ritter. I really do. But there are now players that are going to come to the, through this university and get national exposure, especially moving to the Big 12, and then get invited to the Senior Bowl, and they're going to make an impact in the Senior Bowl, and then you're you're going to be like anxiously awaiting, and you're going to be upset if they don't get drafted high. No longer are you just going to be happy if a player or two gets invited to a bowl game like this or event, a college all-star event after the season and get drafted maybe in the sixth or seventh round. No, the expectations have changed. You can come to this university and get drafted in the first round or at least on day two when you're probably still invested in the NFL draft if you're a casual fan. That's what you want to see. That's what that's what makes this university so hot right now when it comes to college football. More on college football, more on college basketball this week. Um, I'm hoping to have on a, a special guest this week, and that is she is new to the Locked On Podcast Network, uh, but she is doing great already. Uh, Locked On LSU host Caroline Fenton hopefully going to join me this week because She covered Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase when they were at LSU in 2018. So we'll get some insight from what it was like to cover them when they were at LSU and other related topics, hopefully sometime later this week. Um, Game preview of the Bearcats USF game on Wednesday, recap on Thursday, game preview of the Tulsa game on Friday. Of course, a lot of Super Bowl talk this week. Um, Super Bowl opening night is tonight on NFL Network. The Bengals have a pep rally at Paul Brown Stadium tonight at 6. Bengals line can be heard live on 700 WLW. They're doing a live broadcast of the show um, this or tonight from Paul Brown Stadium leading up to the rally. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at Frankie underscore Natty. As you see, NNATI. You can also follow the Locked On Bearcats Twitter account at Locked On Cats. You can also follow me on Instagram, alexfrank9 underscore, and email me at alex3frank at gmail.com. Thank you for making Locked On Bearcats your first listen every day. Now make your second listen, Locked On Bets, your daily one-stop shop for all your gambling needs. Locked On Bets is hosted by your boy Q with expert analysis and insight from Lee Sterling. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. We will be back tomorrow with more college football and basketball news here at the University of Cincinnati. Maybe check in with our good friends from Lockdown Bengals, James Rapine and Jake Lisko from L.A. They're there for the big game this week. As always, stay safe, stay healthy. And until we talk, I talk to you tomorrow, I'm Alex Frank for Lockdown Bearcats. Have a great rest of your Monday.